Hi, I'm Ryan Block, and today we are going to be checking out the menus and interface of the PlayStation 3. Uh, this is the XMB interface that Sony has dubbed it. Uh, we're also going to check out a bit of the online component, uh, including the browser, and we're also going to see a bit of the folding at home client. Um, so this is going to be a complete walkthrough. This is not going to include any gameplay, unfortunately, uh, though there are a lot of clips online, so let's get to it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is create a new user. Uh, obviously that form is auto filled in. Uh, I'm going to delete that and use uh, the interface that some people may be familiar with, uh, with PSP. So I'm going to punch in my name here. As you'll notice it's uh, narrowing down the words on the right. I can uh, actually select my name Ryan already in there in that dictionary and just hit OK. So now I've got my user and uh, there can be a number of user profiles on the system. So let's uh, drill down into the settings. Uh, now, first we're going to be able to take a look at the different languages that are available uh, on the Blu-ray discs. You've got menu, audio, subtitle language, and you've got a variety of selections here, everything from Japanese and English to Polish and whatnot, uh, depending on what the disc is uh, supports. Uh, then you have the screen format, letterbox, and pan and scan. Uh, you've got audio format out, linear PCM, etc. over the HDMI. So let's go into the music settings. Uh, you can actually set some of the import settings on here. You have a selection of AAC, MP3, or AtTrack for importing your music to the PlayStation and a variety of bit rates. And we'll go into the chat settings. Uh, not a lot in the chat right now. Uh, you can send an image or an avatar. I didn't have a chance to test that since this unit was not connected to the internet. So uh, going to system settings this is where you can name your PlayStation 3. This one had a generic name, system language, character set, dictionary type. Uh, you can also change some of the text in the predictive dictionaries. Uh, you can format your drive. This is a cool one. You can install another OS, as you may know. You can install uh, Yellow Dog Linux onto this PlayStation. There's a little bit of hardware information going on there. And some of the production credits of the unit. And you got your date and time settings here. Not a whole lot in there, so I'm going to skip past it. So let's go into the peripheral settings. Uh, this is where you're going to be able to pair your PlayStation 3 with your A2DP or regular Bluetooth headset. And this is where you'll be able to test your eye toy, which this device is not hooked up to right now. In here you can change some of your audio settings, including the microphone volume on the input, uh, be that through the eye toy or through your headset. And a couple of settings for mouse and keyboard inputs should you have connected those via USB. So in here you can change your audio video output settings. We have S-Cart, S-Video, HDMI as you saw, and uh, the, diff the different various resolutions. You've got 1080i, 720p, and 1080p. Got your screensaver settings on there. And here you have a couple more audio output settings. I'm trying to burn through these pretty quickly. And here you've got some of the Blu-ray and parental access codes. Uh, for making sure your PlayStation 3 is locked down. And some of the internet connection settings in here. Obviously, these did not work entirely since, as I mentioned, it was not connected, but you would be able to connect with Wi Fi uh, or over the wired connection. So let's move on to the photos. Uh, you've got photo directories in here, so you can see you can browse through those and pull those up just like so. I'm just kind of screwing around here, so uh, to bear with me as I get used to the interface, the four buttons on the XMB. So in here, this is where you can select the different uh, types of slideshows, which are actually pretty interesting. 
Uh, this is kind of your generic screensaver-esque slideshow. It allows you to zoom in a little bit and pan while you're doing that. But there are other slideshows you can do as well. Another cool one is the photo album. This one will actually arrange your photos uh, on uh, a matte background and gives the dates of the photos on there automatically. And it just starts throwing those photos down. Uh, but what's really interesting here is you can use one of the control sticks to actually navigate that virtual area where your photos exist. So I stopped the uh, slideshow for a second there. And now I'm kind of moving around in that area. So I can zoom in and look up close to some of those photos. Unfortunately, you cannot rearrange them. Uh, but this is kind of more of a novelty. And of course you can access photos on your memory stick. Uh, so into the music area, this is where you can play some of the media that you've loaded up onto your system. Uh, we have some Rolling Stones on here and this is the uh, default screen of uh, music playback that you're going to see on there. But you can choose different visualizer options depending on your mood or if you want to leave this thing on, impress the neighbors, I don't know. Maybe you have a large television. So I'm just going to kind of look for a, a track that's a little bit more fast paced here. A little difficult to uh, see some of the subtleties in the color here. Obviously the video is not the highest quality, but you can do some pretty interesting things with this visualizer. It uh, can generate kind of 3D dynamic landscapes. Uh, depending on the waveforms. This one's kind of a, an OS X screensaver throwback, if you will. So the video is a interesting component uh, on the PlayStation 3. This actually has a live preview mode that will allow you to see the various clips going on your system. I'm going to select one here. Now this mode will allow me to actually define the live preview clip start mode. So if I find a place that I think is a little bit better uh, or more indicative of the, of the clip to show in that live preview, I can select it from here and uh, now I'm going to quit out and you can see that that clip that I just started, that start point that I just had is where what the clip will show. And uh, not a lot to show in the games area unfortunately because most of the game data obviously was not yet downloaded and used. So here's the remote play feature, obviously. This was uh, not something that wound up working for me without the connection, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, show some of that in the future. Obviously the internet browser uh, wasn't going to display a page either, but it was uh, nice to see just a little bit, and we'll see some more on that in just a minute. So I'm kind of cruising around here doing what I can, but again, you'll see some more of this browser in just a moment. And this is where you'd sign up for the PlayStation Store. Obviously, this is not possible for me to do because of the lack of network connectivity. And here, of course, is the PlayStation Network all the way over to the right. Obviously, this is uh, unable for me to access as well. But that should give you a pretty good idea of what you can expect from the XMB interface on the PlayStation 3. So let's go over now and talk to Dr. Richard Marks, Manager of Special Projects and R&D at Sony Computer Entertainment. So you have a message list, create a message. What, what kind of messages can you create? Uh, 
just a, like a text message. Oh, okay, so you can't do uh, like a voice message? No. You can only do voice in, in live right now. We don't have the, the ability to leave a voice message right now. Again, those are all kind of things that may change over time. Right. And so it shows the game that they're currently playing or have loaded? Uh, no, actually that's his icon. So that's he, his avatar. I'm sorry. We call them avatars. So this is who he's picked to represent him. So everyone who ever sees him. Right, no, that. I mean, did, didn't it show a game underneath his, underneath his name? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I wonder if he's actually playing that game right now. Maybe. Might be. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> I've never seen that because there's never been a case when someone was playing a game yet. <laughs> so then if you wanted to, say, to play that game with him, yeah. could you just, like, you know, click, so his, click his avatar and do, like, invite to game or something like that? Yeah, there's a way to join that. I don't know. Peter would probably be yeah, I don't know how you join. Okay, cool. I don't know how you join in a game with somebody, but there's... And then I can set I can set stuff up to tell people that I'm not really here, things like that. What's I here? So you can kind of control your things. And there's a lots of things you can change in your profile to set up how you kind of appear on the other end. And then there's you, when you do chat, you can either pick to do voice or video in voice chat. And let's see. So then there's a, a browser. And so this is the actually going to go out to the network, and I have some homepage set up right now because I have the PlayStation homepage set up. So you can actually do movies and things like that. And uh, this is a slightly older version than the one they showed at the game. So is this basically, I mean, the same kind of browser experience as you're going to have with PSP? Um, it's similar, except you can just, um, I mean, you got to have a lot more screen space for one thing. You can start multiple browsers, so you can have like six oh, different windows awesome. open to different things, and then you can just switch between them. And then video, like, did PSP do something like YouTube? Do you know that, right? Uh, yeah, so the... PSP will do YouTube? Uh, I think the latest PSP browser oh, okay, does, well. but it's not released yet. Okay. So I think that'll probably release probably the same time as we release. Yeah. So have you compared the uh, the amount of time it takes for the PlayStation 3 to complete a folding at home work unit to that of a you know what a PC would take? Yeah, they've definitely done comparisons, and it, it varies based on which protein it is and and uh, whether how much optimization we've done so far on that kind of a protein. But they usually quote somewhere between 20 and 40 is what kind of difference they're getting. 20, 20 and 40. Oh, 20. 20 20 to 40 times. How is this going to be distributed? I mean, are you going to be able to download it on the PlayStation Network, or do you have to buy yeah. this at a store? No, it's definitely going to be a, a, a downloadable content from the PlayStation, and then you can launch it from the PlayStation. There's no disc needed. But we, the other plan we have is eventually to put it on discs, too, that, so it's just there for free mm -hmm. instead of having to download it. The thing is, since you always need network connectivity to do this, kind of have, it's not a big issue to right. expect people to download it. Yeah, absolutely. Turn on. They have all sorts of weird stuff. They're not 